Good morning. My name is Maureen Chung. Welcome to Devotional of 2024. This is Series 2-7. The passage is 1 Kings 11, verse 9 to 13, and the title is, Solomon Fails to End Well. The Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice. Although he had forbidden Solomon to follow other gods, Solomon did not keep the Lord's command. So the Lord said to Solomon, Since this is your attitude, and you have not kept my covenant and my decrees, which I commanded you, I will most certainly tear the kingdom away from you, and give it to one of your subordinates. Nevertheless, for the sake of David, your father, I will not do it during your lifetime. I will tear it out of the hand of your son. Yet I will not tear the whole kingdom from him, but will give him one tribe for the sake of David, my servant, and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. Solomon, son of David, king in Jerusalem, ruled over Israel, from 970 to 930 BC before Christ. He started well, as we have seen in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 1 to 15. That is the devotional of series 1-7. He asked God for wisdom to distinguish between right and wrong so that he could govern God's people dutifully in administering justice. God was pleased with his attitude and gave him more than he asked, a wise and discerning heart, riches and honor, and a long life, conditional upon his obedience to God. God lifted Solomon up above all kings of his time. After he had completed the building of God's temple, God appeared to Solomon a second time, as recorded in 1 Kings 9, verse 3 to 9 and that is in devotional series 2-2. God was pleased with his humble attitude and promised him a lasting dynasty conditional upon his integrity and uprightness in obeying God's commands. If Solomon or his descendants were to depart from worshipful obedience to God, God would reject his temple and the land he gave to Israel as an inheritance. The conditions were laid out clearly for Solomon to keep in mind. Solomon reigned in Israel for 40 years, about the halfway point after the completion of the temple and his royal palace, his downfall began. He had 700 wives, all princesses from neighboring countries, and 300 concubines. Many of these were marriages of convenience for diplomatic reasons, but this was not what God had commanded. In Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 16 to 17, Moses cautioned future kings of Israel not to fall into the temptations prevalent to foreign kings. It reads, The king, moreover, must not acquire great numbers of horses for himself or make the people return to Egypt to get more of them. For the Lord has told you, you are not to go back that way again. He must not take many wives or his heart will be led astray. He must not accumulate large amounts of silver and gold. Now, after coming to the throne for 20 years, Solomon committed the same sins that Moses cautioned against. Solomon had many horses and chariots, tempting him to rely on his military might. He had a total of 1,000 wives and concubines, and indeed they led him astray to worship pagan gods. He also had vast wealth in gold and silver, tempting him to rely on false security rather than on God the giver. With the accumulation of external material goods and carnal indulgence, Solomon lost his fidelity to God. An easy life caused him to let down his spiritual God. Solomon fell from grace. He failed to end well. I too must caution myself. Too much success is not good for me. Pride can easily set in. I'm not above temptation. Therefore, Proverbs chapter 30, verse 79 is right in saying, Two things I ask of you, Lord. Do not refuse me before I die. 
keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, Who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. No one is above temptation. So we better take heed and be thankful for all of God's gifts. The consequence of Solomon's sin is, de- is a decline of his kingdom and influence. God would tear away ten tribes from his domain and give them to Jeroboam, Solomon's former official who rebelled against him. Thus, the kingdom of Israel would be divided into the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. Israel would be ruled by many rebels, one after another. Judah would remain under the dynasty of David. God rejected Solomon according to his conditional promise because Solomon didn't keep his end of the agreement. However, for the sake of David, God kept his word. The southern kingdom of Judah remained in the hands of David's descendants. Both Jerusalem and the temple stayed intact until their delayed destruction by Babylon in 586 AD. However, only when Jesus Jesus Christ, the true fulfillment of the Davidic king, arrives, this son of David will reign forever in his eternal kingdom. The lesson for me is this. Sin has its consequences. God's love and forgiveness does not spare us from the consequences of our sin. God's word holds true. Since God keeps his conditional promise, I must respect that and keep my end of the deal. I must not assume that I can escape the consequences of my sin, even though I am loved and forgiven. Even when I struggle with the ugly consequences of my sin, grace still abounds. The risen Christ is there to restore my heavenly eternal relationship with him. Thus, suffering the ugly consequences of sin has a purifying effect. Suffering is the catharsis that I sorely need because it helps me to end well. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, my God and my Judge, I come to you with a thankful heart for your compassion and righteousness. You have laid out the conditions of my blessing and the consequences of my sin. You have given me the counsel of the Holy Spirit and the Bible to guide my life. Yet, when things go well for me, I become insolent. I tend to do it my way. Forgive my waywardness, O Lord. Let me count my blessings and stay vigilant to my dying days. Let me not stray from your path of righteousness. Even when I live with the consequences of my sin, let me remember your abounding grace. Give me hope for your redemption because I fix my eyes on the risen Christ, who has paid in full the penalty of my sin. I thank you for the discipline and the chastisement you hand out to me. They are good for the cleansing of my soul. May your holy name be praised forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank God for his cleansing. And may we all live and yearn for the coming Christ who redeems us to the end. And have a good day and may God bless you all. See you tomorrow. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Thank you.